Paul Brennan, Labour MEP for the North East, clearly um, a poor night for Labour on uh, Thursday the 7th of May. Um, where now for Labour and where now for the EU? I think we've got to be honest, it was a devastating night for the British Labour Party. Um, I worked for the Labour Party in 1992 when Neil Kinnock was the leader. Um, I was at Walworth Road when the election result came through in 1992 and we were blindsided then. It wasn't a result we were expecting, so it knocked us sideways. And exactly the same has happened again with the added complexity of, uh, if we're honest, we were annihilated in Scotland. Um, so we did very badly in England um, and we did catastrophically badly in Scotland. So we're really very much um, in, a, in a terrible position um, and we now need to select a, a new leader and a new deputy leader. So the danger is we turn internally and start having that discussion, which is an important discussion to have. And the danger is that the British Labour Party are in the, in the changing room discussing tactics, choosing a new captain when the Conservatives are out on the pitch scoring goals and that's a bad place to be when we're running through now to a referendum. Um, a referendum on our continued membership of the European Union, yes or no, in or out. Um, that's going to happen by 2017 which means it could happen in 2016. So we may only be one year away from Britain having a referendum to decide whether to stay in the European Union or not. And um, the British Labour Party need to focus on that as much as they need to focus on selecting a new leader and deputy leader. You say that the Conservative Party may be scoring goals, um, but surely you'd probably concede that it's only a slender majority and it's probably going to be a difficult term of trial for them as well. Their hand has been forced to a certain extent on the uh, EU referendum. Don't you think that that's going to cause them problems? And do you think it's going to cause the EU problems if the UK decides to leave? They do have a small majority, but if I'd be honest, we would very happily swap places with them and rather be a Labour government with a small majority. We'd much rather be there than where we are now. But yes, it'll be difficult for them. They have maybe as many a third of their members of parliament who are fairly much anti the European Union and would be fairly keen to leave. David Cameron said that um, he will not continue as the leader of the Conservative Party for a third term. So once you move into years two, three and four of this parliament, then those who would like to take over start jockeying for position to win the support of the majority of um, uh, Conservative MPs to become the leader of the Conservative Party in the future. Probably an anti-European stance may well be a bit of a vote winner. So we have to hope in many ways that the referendum happens sooner rather than later when Cameron, I think, on balance would prefer to be the Prime Minister who goes down in history as having kept Britain inside the European Union and not the British Prime Minister who took us out. So I think a, a referendum now sooner rather than later would be a good thing, so looking at this time next year. And the implications for the European Union, I think, if Britain were to leave, would be bad, not as bad as they would be for the UK if, as if we left. I think that would be worse for us. But I think, um, and certainly talking to fellow MEPs from across Europe and, and from all parties, not just from the socialist parties across Europe, is many people in Europe will be really disappointed to see Britain leave. We're one of the big countries. Um, often we bring a different voice, a different way of looking at things, irrespective of our party politics, but the British often see things differently. And I think that would be a shame to lose that out of the mix, which is the European Union. And the strength here in this building, um, the strength in the European Parliament comes from the diversity, from working together as a group of diverse nations. If Britain were to leave, this would be a less diverse, a less interesting, and ultimately a less dynamic and successful place. If there were a referendum tomorrow, which way do you think it would go? Um, I would say initially that the opinion polls suggest that uh, Britain would vote to stay in, but the opinion polls suggested there was going to be a hung parliament. Um, so opinion pollsters um, and opinion polls in the UK at the moment are really being uh, judged with um, bucketfuls of salt. Um, it's very difficult to gauge. I mean, I think we've gone through a period um, two, three years ago, which in would include last year's European elections, where the feeling on the doorstep was fairly anti-European, I think, if the truth be told. There seems to have been a bit of a swing away from that. We saw that on the doorstep in this election. But I think, having seen what happened in Scotland, where uh, there was a referendum on Scotland becoming independent, 
everyone said that Scotland would vote to stay in and that it would be a fairly clear majority to stay in. And as we got nearer and nearer to polling day, the polls closed and it was very clear in the last two weeks of the referendum campaign in Scotland that there was a distinct possibility that Scotland was going to leave the union with them. Um, with Wales and Scotland and uh, it was Wales and England and Northern Ireland and that was um, a bit of a wake-up call I think in relation to referendums in general is they are unpredictable and when you have reason and I would argue that reason is on the side of staying in the European Union there's good reasons there's good arguments for staying in but when that comes up against emotion and there are emotional arguments for leaving the European Union that you can see now that those who would want to see us leaving the European arguing that you know give us back our freedom very similar line of argument that the Scottish nationalists used in the referendum campaign in Scotland and a lot of people adhere to that kind of uh, message so I would take nothing for granted I think we need to work on the basis that as it stands it's 50 50 in the UK as to whether we'd stay in or, or come out and uh, the campaign really is underway from now onwards um, whether the referendum happens in a year's time or in two years time or something in between and finally you spoke about the 1992 election and uh, I remember what a di disappointing night that was um, for the Labour Party however that was followed five years later by an absolute landslide victory do you think that's en route for tw 2020? I think one of the interesting things about being in politics is you can never really rule out any of these scenarios. Who would have thought we would have been where we are now? It's happened. Um, it's equally possible that something could swing the other way and we could have um, you know, a majority Labour government this time next year. But um, And all the other possibilities are there as well. Um, we shouldn't underestimate um, how well some of the third and fourth and fifth parties in the UK did. There's a fragmenting of the vote now. The Conservatives and the Labour Party who used to be the two big parties who between them could command maybe 80% of the popular vote. That's no longer the case. You've got a Conservative government now with, you know, if the truth be told, only 36% of the popular vote. And I'd be the first to recognise that we only got 30% of the popular vote. So between us, that's 66%. Um, that's a relatively, you know, only two in three people who voted in the UK support one of the main parties. You've got a third of the people who voted voting for other parties. So I think we have to, to take that into account. Um, but I would be reasonably confident, having been through the 1992 experience, Though we need to remember that the Labour Party had two leaders in that period. People, I think, forget that John Smith became the leader of the Labour Party. He died tragically. We don't know how well Labour would have done in the 1997 election with John Smith as the leader. I think we would have probably won, but would we have gone on to win two more general elections? Um, we just simply don't know. Um, so we've now got to go through the process of selecting a new leader, and all the evidence is, is that's an absolutely critical decision, because even if you have the right policies, if people are not convinced by the leader, you'll struggle. And much as we admired Ed Miliband as our leader in the Labour Party, and I certainly did, I thought he was a great guy, um, you know, we have to recognise that he didn't convince enough of the British voters that he was the right person to lead the country. So we need to choose someone who is convincing in that leadership role, and we need to get a more convincing message on the economy. And the combination of those two seem to be the two key ingredients that will win or lose you a general election, depending on what the British people think of your leader, their ability to lead, their ability to be the Prime Minister and the economic policy that goes with it.